So this was a phase three um, uh, multi-center, double-blind, double-demo study, which had four arms in the study. They, um, there was the P2B product, of course, the combination product. Um, each of its, uh, if it's each of its components, so the 0.6 milligrams of extended release pyroplexol and 0.7 milligrams of extended release resagilin. Those were the other, the second and third arms, and the fourth arm was a, a, cal a calibration or a comparator arm, and that was the um, commercially available a titrated pyroplexol extended release. And the results of that phase three were reported. Um, uh, by the company. They were presented at AAN uh, this year in Boston by Dr. Elmer, and they show um, those results showed comparable efficacy of P2B001 to Parmipexol, and of course, um, it did succeed in, in meeting the regulatory endpoints of uh, better eff efficacy uh, than each of its components. The key secondary endpoint was the Epworth Sleepiness Scale, or ESS for short, and that is a validated scale that is used in a number of medical um, uh, indications measuring sleepiness. And um, of course, that was that was a key differentiating factor between P2B001 and the um, extended release marketed Parmipexol, and in which there was a, uh, a real benefit in that, uh, using that endpoint to show that P2B001 had much less, uh, if any, daytime sleepiness as a result of initiation of that drug when compared to Parmipexol. And importantly, there um, we that was the key secondary endpoint. But we also looked, did a post hoc analysis, looking at what's called a shift analysis. So, the Epworth sleepiness scale is uh, a scale that has um, uh, a scoring from zero to twenty four, and a score of ten has been recognized by the medical community as a cutoff point for clinically significant um, uh, uh, daytime sleepiness. And we use that to look at the um, presence of, of new onset of um, sleep, daytime sleepiness in patients in, in each of the arms. And once again, we see a really um, uh, interesting result in uh, quite a difference, a statistical, statistical and clinically significant difference between the P2B001 and uh, the Primipexol, a, a commercially available product um, in favor, of course, of P2B001. We spoke a bit about um, the key secondary endpoint, the F-board sleeping, uh, sleepiness scale, um, showing a benefit of P2B001. And when we look at treatment emergent adverse events that were spontaneously reported by um, patients, we also see um, uh, a, an interesting difference in the percentages of, uh, of those adverse events. So for somnolence, it was 15% over the course of the trial versus for P2B001 versus 31% for, for the marketed Primipexol. And another um, adverse event that is typically um, attributed to dopamine agonists is orthostatic hypertension. And there was a very uh, um, a big difference there as well. So we're talking about 3% of patients um, uh, reported that um, that adverse event in the P2B001 arm versus, um, excuse me, 12% in the Primipexol arm. And in general, looking at dopaminergic um, uh, adverse events as a, as a class of adverse events, similarly, there was 45% um, uh, case, 45% of patients reported in the P2B arm versus 66% in the Primipexol arm. So that safety profile is is uh, being supported not only by clinical scales, but also by a spontaneous adverse event reporting.